Hello there everyone and welcome back to, to you know, the mod you probably expect by now from me, uh, playing it all day, every day pretty much. Um, but, oh wow, look at that, China's done very well for itself. But, ruin, collapse, and disaster. The oil crisis was having its way with Guangdong. The business state's leadership was forced to drop everything and pick up the pieces. Just as their predecessors in the last decade have been forced to do when you see the collapse. Yamauchi Hiroshi wandered the barren streets of Koshu amidst the hardships of the crisis. Those telltale signs of economic depression and financial troubles were everywhere. Unlit street lamps, the lack of people, the few not the few people present looking somehow disconsolate. The whole nine yards above, the skies were dark with clouds and smoke. The scene was reminiscent of the days of the Yasuda crisis. Nintendo had only been in Guangdong for a year back then. What a terrible time it had been to try to do business. The political turmoil, the intense struggles of the populace, the abject chaos everywhere, those still made him shudder, almost as much as the prospect of going back to that madness did. Transpress her his fear. He managed to keep walking slowly and methodically, hoping perhaps against hope that the clouds would clear away soon, one step after another, but to what end? No truce with the furries. Oh? A hay stared at the ceiling, his thoughts swirled around his head. There was more to be done, always more. Time was growing short, the future held vast possibilities, though not all of them were pleasant. His bed and apartment were reasonably comfortable, more so than that of his parents, and almost certainly more so than where Chung now slept. It would likely not approve all of all of this. It might not last. Would he be happy then, Hay wondered? No, probably just angry, same as always. He needed more work on the projects he'd been assigned. He needed to put more effort into securing a university position for Y, and hopefully for himself at some point. He needed to clean the rack of dirty dishes, which had been sitting there for a week. So much to do, so little time. How much time would he have? Despite all the newspaper articles he'd been in, despite all the offices he'd been shuffled around, despite meeting the chief executive himself, he still lacked a permanent contract. Was he to be done away with when he no longer was useful? If so, he needed to remain useful, at least for long enough to guarantee some sort of, sort of security. He probably couldn't last a week in the same kind of place as Chun, if that would even still be open to him as a crisis deepened. Would this whole project last, he wondered. He didn't know all that much about other countries when he thought about it, even China and Japan. But he knew that Guangdong was an ordinary nation, some might even be regard as built upon absurdity. Was this all a farce? Was he a farce? The thoughts continued to swirl, stifling the air until he suffocated hate to sleep. Is this the beginning of the end of the passion? Now yeah, it's just BS. Mori to jump to his feet and the black leather sofa behind him, darting backwards from the counter force. Yesterday the markets, today those regional offices. What's next? Sony headquarters? How much is enough for your precious little company before you finally talk with us about whatever it is you're doing for once? I'll be honest, gentlemen. I'm doing you a favor by even bothering with you the way I did. All the chief executive offered, not even flinching at Mori's commo commotion, was barely an audible murmur. I'm trying to get trying to ride a course here. We all are. No one here will waste their time, my time, dithering, whining, or putting on how to put a gosh darn road to a vote. We should only like to know, then, we suppose we do should we should not vote on. Masashida's eyes dance upwards to meet Ibuka's. Co-opting Masashida's subsidiaries. Planning Fujitsu militiamen all over the place. All those edicts of yours that never went through the Legislative Council. You listen here, Masashida. One executive overreach after another. That's all you've been doing, clear as day. With a light scoff. Masashida crosses arms, and frankly, with the mess that's going on, I wouldn't say I'd consider it appropriate conduct any longer. And then both him and Marita saw, in front of their eyes, the face of the chief executive stiffening into a frozen stone mask. Eyes darkened and blurry, mouth twisted into an almost permanent bewilderment until seconds later came the cracks. You think I want this? The flood came roaring out of his mouth. You think I want those ordinance after ordinance after ordinance to drag down everything that this effing job asks of me? I have a nation to save, for God's sakes, and I will not have some cretins tell me what to do. No one can, and no one will, but remain calm. At this time of unforeseen turmoil, I'd like to extend my warmest congratulations to those who have stepped up to the challenges we face. If uh, <clears throat> such a wellspring of talent did not not exist in our fair state, I share to think of what we might be now. However, I'm forced to temper my congratulations with a message of disappointment. I received the reports of widespread discontentment from all three pillars of our society, some of which is beginning to seep into our streets and public spaces. This cannot be allowed to fester. I'm sure many who personally blame the chief executive's office for the turmoil are listening in right now. Perhaps I'm expected to emulate my predecessors and simply deny your concerns or pin the widespread despair which has gripped Guangdong and outside agitators. I shall not do so. All men feel despair in times such as these. Despair is only natural. Courage is not the absence of despair. Rather, it is the capacity to move ahead in spite of the despair. If we're unable to continue developing our own sh selves, our capacity, despite adversity, then we are doomed not just as a society, but as men. If we're unable to commit ourselves to the pursuit of excellence, then our current predicament is where we shall stay, and your despair shall be made eternal, ceaseless, unending. Therefore, to the malcontent, I ask you this question. Through public displays of obstruction, mistrust, and vandalism, are you not entrenching yourself in the problems you see rather than combating them? I ask all citizens of Guangdong to cease these childish displays of petulance, and say join in all of our efforts to pull ourselves from the slump and heights never before seen, and to all those who have given all their towards building a better Guangdong, I thank you once again. End transmission. Open the digital eye. Oh. That actually might be really good to do immediately. Lower descent against the government? Restore the power. Well, where friendly encouragement fails, proactive measures must be taken. It's not enough to simply assume that our citizens will see all see reason. To prevent wide-scale disruption, we'll have to quickly move against our sources of, of disruption. To do this, we must be able to watch keenly for disruption all across Guangdong, of course. Once again, Fujitsu has a solution ready and raring to go. Nice. 
How are we doing over here? 2840? That's not terrible, actually. 1949, uphill. After two years, the culmination of Marita Anybook's efforts. A bulky box, wrapped in a full leather casing and topped with two reels of magnetic tape. Sat neatly in its cardboard box, Tokyo Tushin Gogyo, Telecom Tokyo Telecommunications, had its first tape recorder, sized to nearly fit neat feet, feet oh my goodness, uh, fit neatly in the average home, allowing anyone to record and listen to their favorite radio broadcast at any time. <clears throat> and uh, to think Tokyo Shibaru beat to market the book of bitterness creeping into his voice, all because they had a bigger loan from a Mitsui bank than we did. It's infuriating Marita was less restrained in his anger. Mitsui is supposed to be our main bank, but they had two bets. Now our sales are slipping and we have a loan to repay. Look too quietly to adjust their thoughts in the darkened office. Uh, situated on the top, uh, second floor of the combined office factory building setup. They tried not to think about the workers who had left a few hours ago and how many they might have to let go permanently. No use thinking about what could have been. He book instead of retrieving a stack of trade journals. It's all in English. Transistors, something better than vacuum tubes, are the future. But his eyes widened the foreign documents. Their provenance evidenced by the IJ and the classification stamped in the covers. Do you think we can make these locally? Give me enough time and I can and I can do it. Ibuka said with a self-assured grin. We just need the funds. Morito rubbed his chin, rubbing through his options. I'll try. Get my family if I have to, but we can't do this forever. We're actually at 57. Oh man, that is so close. Surveying the domain. The reports are screamed at Ibuka as they arrived on his desk. Shareholders are more than displeased. Tokyo demanded answers that they already have and did not like. Unrest was growing alongside unemployment. None of these things look to be getting better anytime soon. An endless flurry of screaming paper which would one day stop asking for an explanation and start demanding his head. At present, however, they gathered behind an empty desk. Wearing it, a surgical mask to conceal his identity, Ibuka strode through Koshi's neon kaleidoscope. He didn't know what the reports would say. He could get his secretary to state the effing obvious to Tokyo and Fujitsu if need be. What he did not know, however, was why things were not improving. He had to see for himself. Even compared to ten years ago, Koshi had become a sprawling hive of buildings, people, and industry. A monument of modernism, and yet the only energy in the streets seemed to come from the illuminated signs. No signs of laughter, excitement, commitment. The streets seemed like a grand procession of people waiting for the world to end. How could this be? Was this kind of silent stagnation not exactly what the founding spirit of Guangdong, especially under his tenure, sought to avoid? Ibuka did not consider himself a Buddhist, but for whatever reason, the first noble truth came to mind. In this world, no matter what you do, satisfaction can only be fleeting, and the only con constant is suffering. And the unending wheel of, fleet, uh, of uh, samsara, nothing can truly be built, Ibuka shook his head. That was the ideology of the complacent, which had left his, this land in a pitiful state it had been in before he arrived, designed to keep the weak complacent under, decadent, under the decadent. If you expect constant suffering, you will find it. He had to work hard to move to the people and himself beyond the slump. He moved on, the place was getting to him. The best lack all conviction. The worst are full of passionate intensity. Man, we could have had it. We had it last month economic check. We could have done it, but we we failed. I'm giving all my love to this world. Deliver us, and again and again, the skeletal hands grasp at the edge of a book of monsters raincoat and implore pulled calluses sinking into its jet black fabric. Deliver us, strange, kind stranger, from this moth eating us all alive. The almost instinctive scoff escaped from his masked mouth as the chief executive smacked the beggar's hands off and turned away from the alleyway, as if the paper mountains on his desk weren't enough of pain in the butt already. He sighed, ready to finish off today's trek in Akoshi's concrete jungle, but his legs were heavy. Get your hands off me, you effing... He snapped around back at the dank alleyway, only to find the beggar sitting there still, cuddled up, unmoving, tattered, blue overalls meeting his gaze through the brown, smoke-brown sunglass lenses. He took a good look at the Chinese laborer, or former laborer, before him, and the realization crept upon his brain without a sound, and his legs were heavy indeed, heavy with his cold, trickling light within, heavy with 70% of Guangdong's souls whom he hoped, so eagerly yet so vainly, to join him in the Palace of Enlightenment. Heavy with everything he had done to build this engineer's paradise from nothing, with every life he trampled, every sin he committed. Sin? He shook his head. Surviving the death of Tokyo Telecommunications was no sin, nor was second to and excelling at your place within the society. Again and again, Okeo yelled, screeched, pleaded for deliverance to the common labor, but this? This is all the deliverance these people were going to get, heck. Ibuko had taken on this job just to show them the way to go into the first place. All those deaths to, like, beggar Mr. Mr. Beggar Man before him, didn't they have their limbs still intact? They'd be darn well had their chance, and this... They knew better than anyone else, so was he the one to blame if, it, if they wouldn't take it? Was he? Am um, I, therefore, become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Bond by blood. Return of the Japanese capital to bury our problems. A social contract. From the ground up. The profit mode is not one meant for the individual. Nothing shall temper with Ibuka's vision of Guangdong. Once again, asking... Self-preservation is not an instinct limited to Fujitsu. Compromise can go a long way, as much as it pains Ibuka. Hmm. What is it? Perfect our assembly lines. If the external crises deter us from maintaining technical perfection as we ever... We'd be no better than those second-rate producers versus stacking up the warehouses. As long as there's demand, there will have to be supply. 
up how every other manufacturer operates, let us. Let alone us. Compromise can go a long way. No resource untapped. Our products, methods, our labor, we shall ensure nothing is wasted and used to its full potential. No connections unused. To insist on Fujitsu going it alone would stretch our resources to the breaking point at a time of great uncertainty. We need not go it alone. Hmm. To those we fight. In the book is Guangdong, the future is not given. It is one. <coughs> Versus come survival. We know who deserves to be saved, and the saved they shall be. Our model reigns supreme. All across is but a temporary setback for chief executive's limitless ambition, and everyone will, will understand it. Versus our camaraderie lasts forever. To no one to accept help is not a sign of weakness. Being too stubborn, however, is. Interesting. So we got a lot of things here. Away with the rust. The brightest must survive to shine a path into the future. The rest. Don't ask about the rest. Nothing shall temper the book's vision of Guangdong in no quarter. We have one message for our detractors. That's not our problem. It's yours. Deal with it. <clears throat> All men are equal. The only way to enforce the austerity we need to survive is by making sure the pain is equally shared. Any book shares just a portion of the blame. Compromise can go a long way. Versus an invisible cage. We have a message for our detractors. It's not you, it's us. Plug the leak. <coughs> Save them from themselves. Be in staying Guangdong indefinitely. Versus they shall know better. And we'll see the benefits of staying in Guangdong. Every tooth we have, and have nothing to fear from our trusted associates. Because we do not pass the modern police ordinance with amendment and power. Can't buy tie. This is, oh. Every tooth we have. Wait. Zujin descent and Chinese descent will lessen in scale. But it will become more profound. Our problem, our men. And under Peter's protection of the police, because we passed it, because we passed it, but they restrained them. I think we'll probably do this both times. I don't see the point of doing this one. Because the Yakuza thrives, we get the following effects. All systems go. Well, that's interesting. Open the digital eye, and they're going to restore the power. Despite our best efforts, Guangdong's economy remains a victim to all manners of parasites. We certainly exacerbated recent troubles. The global slump has left them more exposed than ever before. It'd be a shame to let any good crisis go to waste. So swift and immediate action shall be taken in order to permanently remove some of our most persistent barriers to economic success. It's not bad. That's pretty good. Uh, that's not good at all. Yakuza is way too high. That's okay. This is pretty good too. That's pretty good. Yeah, just this one down here, or this one over here, Chokoi. Juan Taika. Uh, oh, if you want to the economic review, review, please go ahead. 61 billion, holy crap. Uh, external demand recover. The chief executive's efforts to mitigate the impact of the oil crisis had an effect, yet the bleeding did not stop. The instability did not improve, and the Kampa people, the boxing, the actual men continued to suffer, but this time, unlike during the Yasuda crisis, um, or the heck that had preceded it, they did not take it lying down. Increases in the price of port imported rice and transport fares for key railways caused back to back civil protests over two weeks. There's nothing the police couldn't handle, but it still shook the leg of the government as none other. It was increasingly obvious that the hardships of Yasuda were returned with vengeance, unlike with Yasuda, which is short and sharp pain rapidly handled by succession in the chief executive's office. Long drawn out torture brought about by the oil crisis was driving people to a breaking point and they were making it clear. Big character posters and graffiti and other crude manifestations of dissent, easy to make, hard to eradicate, proliferated throughout the state of Guangdong like a metastasizing cancer. Slowly, the chief executive realized he was having it worse than Suzuki, Suzuki had. Oh, we're still over here. I forgot about this one. My bad. I'm still in the desert. Near you. Is it hot down here? 25 hours a day. Dai Shi dropped off the roof uh, the other day. Selfish dude thought, shell. More work for him until the poor next soul walked in. Always more work for him. More work for everybody. Always more. More, 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 more. What was left of him as a person? Scattered chaotic rumblings of discontent between one file, one sheet of paper, another form, filled in with almost no con conscious thought as quickly as possible. What was his soul any more besides work? Beyond work fatigue and a shapeless, ambiguous, emobic, wordless despair. Management didn't give a crap. They got to browbeat, berate, and otherwise simulate whoever they wished. And an army of the unemployed was willing to take their place. Not management, of course. They got to do F all for more money. They existed at their beck and call, and nobody else's. Certainly not his family, if they were still there after his lifely hus lifeless husk. Made it back to his apartment. Of course, this was all his fault. He could just quit, sure. Who's gonna pay for them then? Jen? You? Junko? You better know it. Screw it, thought Sho. That's never gonna get better. How could it? What was left to live for? His kids would never, ever, ever see him again. They were never gonna see him again anyway. He wasn't a father, husband, anything like that. He was just a pawn of the office, and there was only one way out. Goodbye, Royal. Thanks for nothing. Oh boy. Nice. Hadith.
Nothing else for it. Uh, another late night. No more interminable work. No sign of the crest is going away. Hay dragged his mind away from the attempting allure of sleep and forced himself to sit on the sheets of paper in front of him. Once more, he did what he could do with the data available to him, but that wasn't very much. You can make the numbers dance around this way or move them around that way, but in the end, they just slammed into a brick wall, of course. <clears throat> uh, taking the livelihoods of thousands along the way. People are higher up uh, the chain than him were among them. How many until he, too, fell back into the gutter? He was getting older. The gimmick, gimmick of being the self-taught Chinese boy genius would not last forever, and he was amazed that it lasted this long, thinking about it. In Guangdong, Chinese wasn't really an ethnicity, it was a caste. Chinese farmer, Chinese laborer, Chinese beggar. Any time one of them climbed higher and remained Chinese, it was treated as a suspicious novelty. He seen how his Japanese colleagues, no, even his Zhujian colleagues, looked at him. Hay's place in society was ephemeral, a fleeting. More than anything, for his career, for his family, perhaps for the continued prosperity of Guangdong, he needed some form of security. There was really nothing else for it. John would be furious, and he doubted the rest of his family would like it, but what other choice was there? Hay could have fall back to where he started, not when he had come so far, he made his decision. Let's hope I don't regret it. Hey, advancements in computer, computational power technology. What's well, not to love? As our economy shrinking. Getting better. 1970, huh? And just take the northern desert, it'll be fine. Storm power. She out of the vanguards of the future. Fujitsu shall lead the way into the future by any means necessary. <coughs> Fujitsu has always prided itself as being the forefront of everything it tries, that no matter what the challenge of the discipline, Fujitsu engineers and scientists will master to the fullest extent possible, and then some. It is this visionary attitude that has informed every one of Ibuka's actions since becoming chief executive, setting an example for all who would follow him. Those individuals, the vanguard of Guangdong and the Fujitsu's future, must not be tossed aside like a defective silicon wafer or circuit board. Their wages shall be paid, their work shall be funded and subsidized, and in return they shall give us their unwavering loyalty and, of course, excellence. 1950 drought. Oh boy. A technical demonstration of the familiar tones of NHK radio coming from the disassembled innards of a plastic casing the size of a bento box have been shortened to the point focusing on the promise of Tokyo Telecommunications' latest designs of financial details. The response of the Mitsui Bank loan officers, none of whom were senior executives, was equally short. We will come back to you when we have a decision. Decision my butt, Morita spat. Hands thrusting in his suit pockets. Mitsui also stiffed us a year ago, and they'll do it again. Heck, we don't even know if some of these bankers are going to run some of our trade secrets over to Tokyo uh, uh, Shibaura or whatever else they work with. It took everything we have, our relatives, our savings, everything, just to get a prototype together and pay the employees, he book aside. We'll have to retool the assembly lines to get this to the production, and that takes money that we don't have. You warned me about this when we started last year. Going to the big banks is a dead end. Then am I starting small? Door to door, word of mouth, finding investors the hard way, Morita said agitatedly. This is our project, and we can make it work our own way. After we tapped out of our bank accounts and tested the limits of our own relatives' patience, Ibuka asked, as browse raised, this isn't tofu, Morita. It's not cheap or easy enough to make it sell door to door day after day. Two stood at an intersection, waiting to step over a dividing line in their own lives. Ibuka had the last word as the crowd stepped forward in the street. Let's keep trying. Because at this point, what else do you have? Except try, 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 and try, try, try. Again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Only to be told. Day 68 or 69 or someday. The numbers were melting each other now. A white, gooey sludge trickling from the contours of Ibuka's brain just as his uh, footprints trickled into the contours of Koshu Streets. And so did the creeping realization that no matter how many of them bore the Fujitsu 2 ring, they were never his. Equity Lane, infested with rats, Ouroboros Flats, all those dick graffitis said it all. Uh, Prosperity Gardens. He hadn't even lifted his eyes off his plaque before the stench crept into his nostrils, the same exact stench that had greeted him minutes after stepping on a Koshu soil in 1954. Opium. <clears throat> The most unapologetic drag in all effing existence. Ah. He's flinched. He flinched. His eyes darting towards the gate to his left, only to crash into the seventh circle of heck itself. A flurry of tatters, of grays, blacks, and dirty blues, all withered to the bone, propped up by nothing but the laughably long wimp pipes wiggling in their mouths. They see him coming, but the, they might as well as haven't. The white gray cloud has clogged up as much of their pupils as it had the air. They just sat and smoked and sat and smoked as if there was never a new book of monster looking it all in the eye. So the book of watched and watched until the cloud fogged his head, too. Oh, yet another gaping effing hole in this fabric of reality. That's where, what it was. He thought that the Yakuza had known their place, but apparently not. He thought there'd be enough cameras, like enough living uh, GPF or militia, or even effing camp outside officers to go around, but apparently not. Here it was, reality, cackling back at him, fangs burrowing into his skull and a saliva oozing down his face. He wanted to run, to escape, yet only lead remained in his legs. He thought with every iota second he had spent on his god for second place, he deserved better than this. Apparently not. Give me Tsushida, Miyazaki, Yokoi, now. So now, at this point, we got to make a decision. I think for this one, for the, a lot of the comments just say, can you do the reconciliation ending, or can you do the persistence ending? I kind of want to do both. So for right now, what we're going to do, we're going to go with the 
probably persistence ending, like no matter what, to those who fight. Yeah, we're gonna go with this one. Nothing shall temper the book's vision. We're gonna go with the visionary. Bujutsu has always held the belief that one's best efforts ought to be rewarded, and therefore, the opposite also holds true. An enterprise which stands incapable of weathering the current slump and is one which was doomed from the birth by its own incompetence. Our government has limited resources, better allocated elsewhere than the Sisyphean task of propping up the failed experiments of others. So we'll see how, how far we can get along with this, but we'll see. We're all in this together. The current situation affects all of us, from the highest executive to the lowest factory employee. Naturally, the problem with burdens all of society requires significant contribution from all disabled men members. Our citizens will be able to be made to understand uh, the need to contribute more and do with less, although they're not uh, required to like it. Nice. Our routine disrupted. <coughs> oh. Wait, what? If you want to read about this one, I think I read something like this before. So if you want to read this one, please go ahead. Remain calm. Crap. I'm once again disappointed to see the overgrowing levels of corruption in the streets of Guangdong alongside slacking motivation towards the economic recovery. So this is my last televised address. I hope to see the marked improvement in the attitude of resistance, something which has regrettably not happened. Instead, despite the best efforts of some, stagnation continues, while public miscreancy and violence has only increased. Our malcontents insist upon decisive action and decry suppose repression and injustice, all are perpetuating the conditions they claim to hate so dearly. Some call for freedom while in their actions depriving it from themselves and others. They desire the freedom of living in a pigsty, gorging themselves in mud and rolling the landscape of unchanging mud. No, that is not freedom. Freedom is, very put simply, capacity. It is the ability to change oneself and live according to purpose, rather than be acted on passively by the forces of nature. It is what separates men from the beasts, and this capacity is what our state seeks to uphold above all else. Those who would allow this freedom to be revoked to suit their own idleness have no place in our society, and if they will not reform, they will be prevented from creating further harm. We must be men of action, and in order to achieve prosperity, there can be no room for doubt, for idleness, for delinquency. And transmission, closing in. The view from the upper floors of the Fujitsu headquarters was magnificent, or at least it ought to have been. The glass of Ithan, colossal even by the standards of Central Goshu, towered over the sprawl. From the top floor windows, the neon panama, pana, pana, oh, panorama had once been an inspiration. All they had built, now it seemed like a besieging army. The lights did not flicker, but Inuchi felt like they did. It could go all dark any second now. We thought we were making some kind of breakthrough in our department, but it seems like we're back where we started, said Taka, uh, Takatsushi. Inuchi nodded. Same in his. Now and again, they make some kind of push, or a new product would be look promising, but then they fall back into the same hole. There simply wasn't enough money or a sufficient supply of petrochemicals. Not much they could do with it, innovate their way around that, so you can't think like that. So, this has to end eventually, right? Said Takasuchi. We got this far, we'll be okay, and things will go back to normal soon enough. It's tough, but we can wait this one out. And though Chi smiled and nodded again, he didn't believe him, and doubted uh, Takazuchi believed himself. But what else was there to believe? Omuto, Azujin, who'd been talking with them, slightly excused himself from the room, perhaps felt the pressure a little more keenly. Yanuchi couldn't blame the man for it. It was a prize who still was in as good a shape as he was. Long way up? <laughs> Long way down. Jingo Jungle, Yasukawa Yoshiko, felt rage looking at the papers in her hands, tabloids from other journalistic agencies, and publishers that she had picked up on the way to work for the Kantan Fujin Koran. Looking over them, she saw the same thing repeated and multiplied. Kantan Koran, a Fujitsu propaganda rag, and Yasu Yasukawa Yoshiko, Iboko's chief propagandist. Backroom dealings and curried favors exposed Kantan Koran cherry pick stories for Ibuka. Scrunching up the rival newspapers in her disgust, Yoshiko noticed people pointing at her and whispering, Wait, isn't that Ibuka's puff piece rider? She could feel their eyes, she they whispered and pointed at her, with leers and contemptuous grins becoming more and more ever present by the minute. This wasn't supposed to be happening. Yoshiko knew those tabloids were on the back foot. She knew those headlines were just desperate piecemeal attacks. So, then why the F was it that these good-for-nothing yellow papers, backed by second-rate businessmen, who knew nothing but profit, will still get to hold sway over the populace? It wasn't fair, it wasn't fair, it wasn't fair. Ibuka's propaganda to resolve herself. She walked into her office and sat down in front of the typewriter. She would expose these garbage newspapers and reporters for who they really were. Meanwhile, the jungle burned some more. I can't see. What did you do to deserve this? Uh, so you say, Yokoi hit a gate glance at Yubuko's exactly once, tapping his tapped his cigar against Ashtray once, twice before another volley of chuckles are up there from his mouth. Who knows? Maybe you'd want to ask yourself out. Uh, I came here for answers, Yokoi, not your games. Yubuko's words slammed into the floor as his, fi as his fist did the table. The opium. <coughs> where did they come from, and where in the world did you get your hands on them? Hey, now, I never said any of my boys were involved. Yokoi shook his head, giggling. I could be Stanley Ho's lackeys for all I care, but you know what's funny? None of it mattered. Those junkies, those good for nothings, as you may call them, his eyeballs flashed towards Ibuka, although he wanted a way out, and in a sweet way out, it was what the dealers gave him. And you know, I can't really blame them, because between all those free markets and all those Fujitsu swept shops he paused, it might just be the only thing they could turn to anymore. I uh, say, so care with the stupid games, Yokoi. Ibuka darted to his feet. You'll come clean with all your filthy little acts, or I'll. Or you'll what, His Excellency? The sudden growl from Yokoi's throat froze Ibuka into place. Stick all your tin men on me, and then go ahead and keep pulling all those standards and deadlines out of your butt, he stood. Keep pushing, keep demanding all those people. He pushed a cigar against Ibuka's shirt, staining it with the grayness of things you know darn well they just can't do. 
And you even had the gall to kill him as all for the future or whatever. The voice was roaring, multiplying a legion of demons and descending upon Ibuka. Tell me, Mr. Chief Executive. Tell me, has it ever occurred to you, your oblivious, stupid brain, that maybe, just maybe, you are asking for too much? Let's roll this together, but our model reigns supreme. Our government is found on the strength of its economic model, and the current crisis is merely its ultimate test. Were to require assistance now, we would merely be legitimizing ourselves, delegitimizing ourselves, and for Tokyo, proving ourselves inferior to the decrepit blood of the Zaibatsus. We must stand our own two feet in order to achieve true greatness. It is but a temporary setback for Chief Executive's limitless action, or ambition. Prosperity Gardens after action report. Uh, I process the old 400 hours. GPS squads and auxiliary corps breach the uh, entrance of apartment 178 of the Prosperity Gardens residential facility on reports of narcotics sale and production. Upon entrance, law enforcement elements was immediately fired upon, causing two non fatal injuries and beginning a fire fight which lasted until 04 17 hours. Six suspects were incapacitated, but which were four at, were killed at the scene, one which later died of his injuries, and one is currently in intensive care. The remaining eight suspects are in custody alongside two suspected of simple possession. Two police officers and one auxiliary were killed, and five more total were currently recovering from injuries. Apartment 178 and its two adjoining factories were found to contain 20 kilograms of heroin, 18 kilograms of cocaine and other amph amphetamines, as well as 30 kilograms of a cannabinoid substance. A more thorough sweep of the facilities is recommended to determine whether additional hidden supplies exist. All suspects, barring those uh, suspected of consumption, are of Japanese origin and assumed to hold mainland Japanese criminal organization ties. Communications are underway with Japan to determine whether extradition is deemed necessary. While well, GPF performance is regarded as generally mediocre by auxiliary observers, the actions of Officer Hayashi Kozen, badge number LC049, were deemed as exemplary, continuing upon an excellent track record. An official condemnation is recommended, and a report, and dear Chief Executive. We thank you for all of your offer of association, which we considered and voted on carefully. As the results came in, however, we have regretfully chosen to reject Fujitsu's offer of association. We realize, as spirit of correspondence, that this may cause our legality to come into question, but it's a risk we are willing to take. The Guangdong Federation tradesmen exist to protect the interests and provide support to the Zhijing community, where, no, uh, where it has no other. Unlike the Chinese uh, Japanese communities, we hold no land to call our own, and we must therefore keep our identity strictly independent. Because that Fujitsu association will be to contribute to the title of Zhijin increasing connection to patronage and political loyalty, rather than a social and ethnic category. Furthermore, given our heavy membership among Fujitsu's rival companies, especially Sony and Chungkong's, Fujitsu association will generate an unacceptable conflict of interest within our organization. We urge you to refrain from impeding upon both the GPF GFT's independent status, and that of the Zhijin people as a whole. In order to truly achieve the excellence of prosperity often spoke of in the government complex, we believe it's necessary to walk an independent path with best regards, the Guangdong Federation of Tradesmen Head Office. Find me a list of members. Is this hot enough? Probably not. Very hot. Tightening the belt. Everyone saw or heard of the broadcast. Fujitsu made sure of it. A group of a simple Japanese notable saw it in person, while the rest of Guangdong experienced it through the radios and television sets, giant screens of public squares, and dormitory loudspeakers. The man from Fujitsu, Ibuka notably absent, walked up to the stage and made their announcement. In order to ensure the con continuity of a stable environment for innovation and excellence, those whom Guangdong had rewarded would be required to return his favor in an hour of need. Tax rates were soon increased significantly, especially for the upper crust. Even in the packed conference room, there were announcements that was made. There was an uproar. How could the government do this? Guangdong was found on rewarding the most successful, those who had produced the nation's vast wealth and who had the drive to do whatever the land's original masters could not. How could they be betrayed so at a time like this? Was there not a teeming mass of wasted human potential that deserved such a punishment far more than they did? The Vigitsu executives sternly replied that if Guangdong's unique models to be preserved, those who benefited most were expected to stick with it in good times and bad in order for the models to survive. This is little to calm tensions, though. Nor did the proportionally greater tax increase on the wealthy do much to cheer the spirits of the Chinese and Zhijin who heard the announcement from far away. By contrast, head after head found themselves hung in the front of the TVs, readers and speakers, more weight on their backs, spines twisting, creaking, growing ever closer to a final snap. Will this ever end? It just keeps coming for all we live underground. And now you're telling me, Chun felt the words hissing through his throat, that all the despondence among the folks who at Haizu is somewhat my fault. I mean, for F's sakes, at least throw some of the pamphlets into the hands before you dump them all down the drain, would you? Screeched a little red, tattered Zhang Shan's suit quivering with his frail body with every outburst of words. I just don't get why you're so gosh darn pissy about what actually worth the darn and extra class struggle. About keeping up all those people's vigilance. And since when does vigilance mean trashing random jewelry stores and making walking targets out of themselves? Bellowed scab arm, horse and slicing every valve of his mouth, the entire Liwan branch under you has been nothing but <clears throat> a farce. Red, just a minute. Well, excuse me, but I'm not the one who here who can't even pull his own parents out of the effing sofa. Chun opened his mouth and her tore up his mouth as the vocal cords failed him. Little Red's jeers were still deep in Chun's skull as he reached for the familiar, or was it familiar anymore, after so many nights away, door. If there was one thing that wannabe Maos was right about, this was it. Chun failed to mobilize even his own parents, Leong and Mai, heck even why, they can't wallow in Ibuka's shadow forever like so many others. But they have to stand up and once again, Chun will have to tell him. Well, I didn't even bother with a knock and crash through the door, change wouldn't come to those who just give up, change. Therefore, I decided to apply for Zhu Jin, Mom, Dad, why, I hope you understand. 
Who words froze Chun in his tracks? Perfect assembly lines. <laughs> Vijitsu. It's a byword for quality and perfection across the sphere. And will not change even in the, the most turbulent of times. While the competition struggles to economize and adapt to new times, we'll stride firmly towards the future. The optimization of production processes, the streamlining of our uh, assembly lines, and the revamping of our product design will result in a leaner, meaner Fujitsu machine. But the razor sharp focus on bleeding edge of technological development. We need not amount to products diluting a brand, all we need is a selection of the best. Fair weather friendship. I'm beginning to think this partnership was a mistake, Yasukawa, said Takashi. Oh, Takasaki. Readership has taken a solid bump, and I'm sure you've already lost or already read our mail. Supporting the new tax was a bad idea. With their specs, said Yoshiko, with the new tax, people aren't going to be spending as much on luxuries, which unfortunately includes the Kantan Koran, so we can't blame it all on our editorial line. People may be angry, but they'll be angry if we're shown to be the hypocrites. People are hypocrites, replied Takasaki. They don't want to see consistency. They want to see themselves reflected in our magazine. A lot of people are changing their minds about the administration. Many of them will read Kent on Koron. We have to consider them. But what about our sources, asked Yoshiko. What about our access to government and business? If we lose them, we lose our edge. When things get better, our readers will come back and we'll have been vindicated. If things get better, said Takasaki. Don't get me wrong, Yasukawa. I'm making, I'm making no final decision here at this stage, but if push comes to shove, we may need to reconsider our priorities. You're a darn good journal, so I hope you understand. Yoshiko. Couldn't I decide whether she didn't understand or she understood just fine. They were right to support the new tax. It's biggest opponents were hardly being uh, made destitute, but not like she had been after Yasuda. Never been made to claw their way back up to the ladder to make a name for themselves from nothing, but they expected in a society built on excellence to sit on the laurels and experience the same rewards as in good times, even as its economy floundered. If such people should be ruined for the greater good of Guangdong, so be it. I understand, sir, but blue are the words I say and what I think. It was as if time itself had plunged below zero, and Chun could even feel the cold seeping in his pores, and that internal instant he carelessly surveyed his brother's face as it turned towards him, certainly wider than at last he remembered. It seemed like he could book his dog trees did their job after all. In the next second, his fist was already upon that pretty face. Thud, crimson droplets blossomed into the air, clanks and screeches went, flying as Hay stumbled and crashed into the cupboard. My flinches, her eyes blurry with tears, immediately Y started darted up, Chun, Hay, stop. So this is how the project kindly replaced his family. Chun could barely hear the hissing through his own teeth. The coal was plugging up his ears. If we could even be called family anymore, instead of all your ga uh, zai friends out there. He felt the cold enveloping his eyeballs. Come on, hey, say something, gosh darn it. Say you give a crap about the rest of us. Yet in Hay's dark brown people, so you could only find more ice and more apathy. I'm taking that as a no. The cold poured in Chun's heart. Now then, why don't you get out of our sight, stupid jackal? You will not have the squabble in our house. With a smack of the table, Long Tu jumped to his feet. Hay has been explaining himself well enough, and anything he could earn for the family is anything that could get us through all this crap. So you just leave it to all this ingrate and rot in the gutter yourself? The coal was getting to Chun's brain now. I thought you and Ma were better than this, gosh darn it. We only deserve the best of ourselves, so why haven't you? Our purpose, variant 4, 034. The coal hadn't left Chun's mouth when he froze dead solid in his throat. He stood at the door, met the petrified glares of his family for another few seconds, and stormed out without another word. End of the balance, Platinum C, reaching as far as the eye can see. 1951, September, Angels and Demons. We've done. Everything we could. Over. But the sums just don't check out. Scaling production to a viable price point cannot be done without more funds. Funds we don't currently have with estimates that may yet change. Morita and Ibuka listened to the final reports of Tokyo Telecommunications Board meeting with Sony Expressions, telling them that they, what they already knew. They had ordered the board to explore every option they had, and now everyone looked at them. They're all dismissed, Morita. Morita, can I have a word? Ibuka dismissed the assembly. All who shuffled out of the room with the glum expressions. I got a phone call the other day, Ibuka said, not looking Morita in the eye. It was from Fuji... To Shinki Manufacturing, the Furukawa Zaibatsu's electric arm. They got word of our transistor radio project. Having a Zaibatsu at her back, even as one of small uh, Furukawa, that would be a game changer, Morita replied. I'm not done. Fujitsu wasn't offering a loan or co development, they want to buy us out. The two sand sounds as he book his words sunk in with Morita's mouth hanging open until he could string together his thoughts in a coherent fashion. And so what? Uh, we go back to working on someone else's payroll again, Morita spluttered. So raising his hands in frustration, leaving the Navy, borrowing money from everyone and anyone we know, all just take orders from someone else. If you have a better idea, you book a fire back. I'm all ears. Falling from grace. And we do have a cup of tea here. Nice lemon tea. Something I have not yet had on the channel, but willing to try. Is this desert? No, it's not. No, we beat those guys up too. Yeah, we're going to lose. So we're not going to do that. Our motto reigns supreme, my friends. Um, so we did that one. Uh, let's take a look. See, uh, ah, do we want this one? Increase our seat. The Matsushita seats by one. Attempt like these, we turn on the Japanese expats or Japanese capital. Hmm, that's so much more stability. Oh my God, that is so radically good. But we'll do that next time. Uh, away with the rust. 
The town for charity is passed. Earnest juice matured rapidly, far too rapidly for certain elements of the laboring population to keep up with. We can no longer make allowances for aging a litter of peasants' half-wits. To solve production and take up valuable factory space. Our employees and will be vetted extensively to ensure that education and skills are adequate and with the waste shall be done away with. Donut Hole. A certain retailer, Zhujin Man. His name does not matter. There were easily 20 such cases around the whole of Guangdong who owned a small to medium sized electrical component store someplace in a major settlement, and the state went to a government office to receive subsidies. Early been easier, but now it's only given to firms with a rec record of maintaining profit and solvency for a sustained period of time. Thankfully, the man had required the papers. Wait, what was that? Was that his wife? Was she getting police papers in her hand? Great, absolutely perfect. It wasn't enough for her to run a rival firm to him, wasn't it? Time to put an end to this. Laying a hand on her shoulder, he asked coldly, What the heck are you doing? Said wife shook off his hand and retorted, Doing? I'm going to file a charge against you and your firm because I have evidence of your sabotaging my production and distribution lines just to take the subsidy off for yourself. The response came back, neither confirmation nor denial, no, merely a frigid remark of, It's all due to your own confidence anyway. The retailer's wife cannot but interpret that as an attack on her humanity and dignity, screaming, Why you little before descending headlong into obscenities? We had a slaughter husband, who punched right back. It was almost a terribly ugly brawl in a gigantic scene in the office, with others trying to drag them apart, but being affected by the dis distilled searing victory all themselves. It was like a contagion. No quarter. <coughs> There's just no reasoning with some people. Despite our extensive measures to resolve the current predicament, all forms of insipid complaints still howl in the government complex, and opportunistic rabble rousers shot from the streets. Those who chose to complain rather than contribute will be made an example out of. We shall see all, and all shall be made well, no matter what. I don't know if there's a really good place for us to really attack. I'm starting to get up some deserts up here, which is pretty nice. Let's get up to here. Maybe we can go over, over here, maybe? Yeah. Can we do anything here, maybe? Maybe not? Happy lag? Ah! Iran is gone. Kaboom, too! Very nice. True to your vision. The homeless man did his best to beg for money in Japanese as Yoshiko passed him towards her apartment entrance. She barely gave him a second glance. We've all got problems. Some people did things about him, others did not. Too many did not. The streets of Koshi recently had been devoid of hope, but worse than that, devoted of pride. Not at least in her office. It seemed the Canton Koran, having made it this far, is now set to run away with his tail between his legs. After receiving some minor pushback from the short sighted. Was journalism not supposed to hold a light to the truth? To be bold in its assertions? Not pandering. Who were they supposed to pander to anyway, right? Let's all give up and die, for the lower classes in a language they cannot bother learning, right? You are owed money and prestige for nothing in return to the wealthy hoarders still playing the top, all the while the few who still try to make up something for themselves get crushed between both ends? No. Now was not the time for that. Yoshiko would not go back to the desperate survival that characterized her life immediately after Yasuda. Nor would she have to be sold off to whatever viewpoint the Canton Karam wanted to chase as she waited to be ma ma married off by her father in the days before Yasuda. Guangdong had made Yoshiko so much brighter, more independent, committed, and ambitious. The book administration was unpopular with a lot of people, but it had shown her all she could be, and she owed them something for that. Darn it, Takasaki. Darn the Kantan Koran, she would write what she believed in, and darn the consequences. Some uncomfortable truths must be spoken. This. Yeah, not quite. Could I actually hop out here, maybe? I think it's hot enough, but hey, you never know. Hey, yeah, it might just be hot enough on occasion. Faking of comedy. Ma Yuan Guan had always called himself something of a professional con, con man. For years, it had been more or less a joke. His cons never really worked, but it was a miracle the police hadn't gotten him for it yet, this time on the other hand. With the oil crisis screwing everything up, and sending Chinese workers out of the factories in mass in accordance with the book's dictate, Ma had hit the mother load. Forging into diplomas for dejected, angry, desperate clients, he gave them a ticket to ensure they wouldn't get thrown out of the workplaces. That played out well, quite well, actually, until it didn't. Ma was counting his money one day until a client came back, not with money or no expression of thanks, but the militiamen behind him. The jig was up and the policemen sealed the deal by uttering their usual platitudes about vocational integrity, zero tolerance for forgery, the need to prevent contraventions, and the state of law. The state law. The con, and con man felt rage he's not felt in years, even when his previous uh, schemes had failed. Were these scum going to lecture him and get away with it? Absolutely not. Ma stood up and spat on the faces. Then turned and aimed to match the machinery he'd used for his diploma mill. They beat him up for that. Heavily. But Ma regretted nothing. Perfect, perfect artist's assembly lines. Fujitsu is a bioware for quality and perfection across the sphere, and this will not change even in the most of turbulent times. While the competition struggles to economize and adapt to new times, we will stride firmly towards the future. The optimization of production processes, the streamlining of our assembly lines, and the revamping of our production, our product design will result in a leaner, meaner Fujitsu machine. With a razor sharp focus on the bleeding edge of technological development, we don't need a mountain of product diluting our brand, all we need is a selection of the best. Which I might read earlier, my bad, but whatever. 
Remain calm, dissatisfaction, disorder, disobedience. Despite the best efforts of our government and myself to reason with certain elements of the populace, for the necessity of calm, of diligence, of continued perseverance, my words have fallen on deaf ears. Perhaps they do not understand the realities of the global economic crisis and what must be done to relieve ourselves. Perhaps they, consciously or unconsciously, wish to remain forever in the holes that they have dug for themselves and wish to see everyone else brought to their level. Know this, however, you cannot succeed. Guangdong will not allow itself to be weighed down by a minority of idle miscreants. Your reform will be welcome, but is far from necessary. By hook or by crook, our security will be maintained. Vandals and petty criminals will not be allowed to threaten the livelihoods of our economy and that of the most productive citizens. Your juvenile protestations will achieve little. Not even the collective immiserations of all. Believe me, it is quite difficult to do behind bars. The rule of law will be maintained. Stay calm, be productive, obey the law, or face the consequences. End transmission. Anything else here? Yes. We're getting close. Corruption? Barely any. Oh my god. So we need to be in the mountains for this. Are there mountains around here? Oh, there are mountains up here. So we gotta fi finish these guys off first. Ah, oh, they still have two. Uh, that's an easy way to get, like, encircled. So. Can you actually win here? You might be able to. No quarter. And. That's a little hard of time, but I don't really care. No resource untapped. Uh, the pursuit of perfection is an uncompromising one, even as the economy sputters and t t continues to decelerate. There's simply no excuse to waste effort, resources, or labor, especially given all of our efforts setting up our independent supply lines from the steel belt. We'll reiterate, by all means available to us, that we expect peak performance from every worker involved in feeding the industrial heart of Guangdong. If one can walk, one can work, and as long in, as in the previous crisis, there's no shortage of willing hands looking for a job, which usually will have its due, come what may. While I continue to stare at the notes inside Hayes' old toolbox, as much as her eyes reacted to the light which indicated all the diagrams, the blue and the white, the almost illegible scribbles, her mind continued to fail to comprehend it. She wasn't just Hay, she supposed. Just Chinese, perhaps. No, couldn't be, think that way. Chen would hate the just, and Hay would probably be disappointed at Chinese when she could be more. If she could, if it was more, she could still hear the sound of the punch in her head. High school was drawing closer to an end after that college entrance exams and success or failure. Which would it be? Her Japanese was better than most of her classmates, but was it good enough? She did well enough in most of her subjects, but what could really be defining her? Whatever it was, it wasn't engineering. It was probably a good thing you weren't expected to apply for a specific major like in some countries she heard about. In any case, she couldn't let herself become fodder for the factories. She could see what it did to her parents, what it did to her brother. But if she got to be someone like, somewhere like Hay, her life would just be dedicated to causing their immiseration. She could move forward, she knew it, but she had to find a different path for herself, one in which she could be true to herself and proud of the woman she was about to become, but in Guangdong, what could that be? Hope, tempered by doubt, and position. You know, X-ray Kilo Echel, Echo be, uh, advised. We have four suspects exiting light industrial sector at Foxtrot Tango 179er, believed on arm, but exercise caution. Acknowledge control. Units on the way. Citizens Wong Yufai, Suan He, Ng Wai Fang, and Yong Jung Min, you are hereby under arrest for illicit membership of the proscribed organization known as the Committee of Chinese Labor. You have the right to remain silent. Proscribed organization? Since when? Since last week, citizen. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse for criminal activity. Anything you do will, uh, will be taken down, will, uh, as it may be used against you. Suspects in meat wagon control, request immediate return to the station. Got a lot of angry faces around our position. Got for that, you're cleared to return. Understood, X-ray Kilo. I could go out. Ah, Fujitsu is the future. I'm going to this again. Yeah, 17% is pretty bad. Zushin's board is still pretty decent, though. Nice. We got a decent amount of political power, which is good for us for now. Uh, we may need it. We're definitely going to need it later for helping dismantle pretty much everything here. Ah, 1952. January. Final call. A Bilko monster slouched deeper into his chair, one of the many deserted factory floors after hours, while running his hands through his hair trying to figure out an angle to save his company. And there really wasn't one, what well, really wasn't one, not that he could see, no matter how much more he objected, there wasn't anyone else who was willing to lend to them or cover their expenses. He'd even call a few less reputable lenders, though he had enough of a head for numbers to quickly excuse himself when they started changing double-digit interest rates on a weekly basis. They didn't even get into questions he was starting to get from the other engineers. How could Ibuka tell the rumors and worry questions about Tokyo tele Telecommunications failing or falling behind the competition and being distant to fail were true? Nor did they have an answer to give to those who knocked at the door to report they'd receive a competing offer from another firm, invariably unnamed, and it was likely with a higher salary attached. It was too much of a coincidence to believe it was purely accidental. As much as that is Ibuka delayed answering Fujitsu's advances, they were steadily piling on the pressure to convince him otherwise. The phone call ha had been the carrot. The whisper of campaigns in town poaching were the stick. Ibuka, a lone voice echoed from the factory floor's entrance. Meters away, you have a phone call from Fujitsu. 
And there was Fujiju's second and likely last offer. One addressed to him alone. I'll be right there. We do a spot of corruption, which we don't mind getting more, maybe, but we can do this even faster. But mm, I don't want to goose camp by tie control. Seven and a half percent is not terrible. Yeah, we'll do it. Five percent. That's okay. We have enough political power to help de delete that five percent. Um, decrease the control of four percent. We might want to do this one. We'll get more Chinese support. Seven and a half percent. Um, so just or is there another thing for corruption about two and a half, three ish? Increases Yakuza and Tribe Control. Not worth it. We can do that one too, and then do uh that one why not. A very minuscule amount of corruption. Hey, good job guys. Deserts. A lot of desert. We're doing well over here. Good. Mm, PH. Of course, when the Legislative Council, or the man at the top, spoke of perfecting the assembly lines, they cared not a whit of sacrifices that are required at all levels of the average faculty to do it. They merely say, it is granted to the strong and the competent, and the wise overcome the trials set before them. In reality, it was granted to the people that work themselves like slaves to overcome the trials set by Fujitsu until they could do no more. So there's a scandal in a certain Fujitsu facility. An engineer had, according to the local scuttlebutt, overdosed on sedatives while headaching day and night over how to maintain the assembly line quality despite a lack of funds, materials, and time. A few of her co-workers questioned her prudence or self-care, many more, a large part of whom were themselves on some kind of prescription drug or contemplating it, questioned aloud whether it was reasonable for Fujitsu to be so hard line about maintaining the quality line. Then they came a statement from above, of course. <clears throat> it seemed to solve everything, but it was in reality nothing better uh, than the usual boulder plate when distilled to the strong and the competent, rather than loosen uh, working conditions, the uh, harsh drug restrictions, the harsh drug restrictions. And all the chatter suddenly sounds unnaturally. Now they all said, Poor Harada. Poor Harada, she have, should have known better. And mercy. Nothing more, there's nothing more. Everything was dead, whether they realized it or not. Hives upon hives of rotting flesh piled upon each other, feeding on the carrion even further gone. Above it all, the grotesque tumors of a malignant foreign entity fed on the carnage, eating more and more until it drove its food supply to extinction. It too would then starve, leaving a half digested pile of human refuse in its wake. There was no help left. None in this world. But he couldn't just leave the people to their fate, nor himself. Not when it couldn't be ex expedited. The knife cut through the street, slicing inside flesh, severing veins, opening wounds, allevi alleviating suffering. Many clutched their injuries, choked, begged for a little while longer, but it was soon all right. Their time on the stage of the grinding wheel could finally end. Not for him yet, however. Someone had to have drive and gumption. After all, wasn't that what the government broadcast kept saying? Where were the police, he wondered. Were they two on missions of mercy, believing it oppression? His soul and his blade yearned for anticipation, but he would have to wait. He could not die yet, and many were more deserving of a release than the agents of the companies. I could linger in the, in the lot, rot a little more, just a little longer, just... The bullet hit him square in the back. In a few shot him as he kneeled over, head facing the sky, perhaps just as well. None here knew his name, and the death was anonymous and omnipresent in the three pearls. At the very least, he provided some compassion to the killing. As the signs drew nearer, the dirty gray of the Koshu sky faded to an endless black... Nothing... More... But bomb by blood. As much as we may rely on the Zujim. We rely on the Japanese even more. Z Japanese investors and officials must be convinced of the wisdom of Ibuka's vision of a modern, efficient Guangdong forge and rivers of silicon built by expertly trained minds, sold at premium prices, and at exorbitant profits to the endless masses. If it takes some incentivizing to convince them, then so be it. Guangdong will be nothing with Japan, and it would be disintegrated without disintegrate without Jap the Japanese. The Zujin will just have to wait for their turn. Penguin's detour. Yep, or yep, took a shuddering breath. The shift made all the more brutal by his recent injury, so recent that he'd been sent out of the infirmary and re after recovering and immediately ordered back to work some three days ago despite his, his being left half a cripple. And it just ended. Lying down in his dormitory, he tried to do his best a bit and succeeded. Or he would have, have anyways, had he not heard the sounds of yet another strike within the factory being violently cracked down upon, trying to screw his eyes shut and filter out the noise, he began to relax again, or would have, had a group of black-clad militiamen now shut the door open and began to scoop up the belongings of his dorm mate, sparing only a glance at Yeet. They explained in the most curt manner that this worker here is being transferred away to other factories. In consideration for your disabilities, you will not be troubled any further. Yeet knew that this measure was for what it was. An attempt to break apart strikes in the factory. Disguised as cruel mercy, peering out of his side of the room, which was small enough to be compared to a prison cell, he saw his roommates for the last time. The man's face was bruised, his hands were tied, and in his eyes, whose lids were purple from injury. There was a spark of something Yeep couldn't understand. Biting him farewell in a way the militia would not notice. Yeep took another shuddering breath and tried to relax. It took him until an hour before the next shift to fall asleep. But now we're fully in control here. Is expats love us. Zhu are actually pretty decent with us, too. The Chinese absolutely detest us. 
But may, money where it should be. While our commitments may be, upon, might be up, our spending is not, for we are in no position to squander our fiscal stability amid the oil crisis. Murmurs of discontent may, there may there be. But there is simply the price we must pay, lest we shatter the promise of the Silicon Dream. For the local officials who have too long skated off of bribery and graft, this should hopefully serve as a wake-up call. One should not need to spend a stack of yen every day to do their duty. And the Democrats will do well to hammer this into their heads. Hmm, we're short-staffed. 1952, introspective. In the end, the only thing that wasn't certain was Morita's reaction to the vote, while Morita had been busy preparing the groundwork for the, his do-or-die sales campaign. Ibuka had done the numbers again and again before the other board members, <clears throat> swaying them to his point of view. The only way for the only way to make enough of a splash in the electronics market to stay relevant for the next product was to agree with two of Fujitsu's terms. What mattered to Ibuka and the rest of the board was getting a product, any product, to the market. The brand of tel Tokyo Telecommunications wouldn't matter if they all starved, of course. Haid watched Morita thunder and rage at the proposal, presenting his rebuttal and going red in the face, only for the color to drain as the rest of the room had raised their hands at Ibuka's call, of course. Morita hadn't bothered to wait for the result to be announced before storming out of the room. Now alone in the deserted boardroom, Ibuka sighed as he replied their events in his head. He had known Morita had been attached to Tokyo Telecommunications, but he didn't think he'd fight to the death over it. If engineers like Ibuka were supposed to be vulnerable to tunnel vision, merchants like Morita were said to know when to cut their losses. Now, maybe you should have told Marita about the vote. Try to get him to come around one more time, then maybe Ibuka a phone call. You know who it is. Ibuka nodded warily to the assistant at the door, but any kind of, uh, uh of fatigue disappeared the instant he heard the new management's first order. Morita's a liability. He has to go. So we're going to be at 80%. You get up to 80%. Not bad. Ooh, we're running out of political power finally. Oh, that's not good. But it is what it is. From the ground up, while our position in the Legislative Council remains secure, many of our fellow compatriots in the Legislature are unable to put the needs of Guangdong over their own ambition. Complaining daily about our supposed misdeeds, slights, and all manner of transgression, painted or not. We might have tolerated this behavior in earlier times, but Guangdong is in crisis, and we cannot permit those who are unable to see beyond their own two feet such privileges any longer. They and their corrupt practices and associates will be removed with force if necessary. No matter the short term instability, Guangdong will grow stronger for it. We're losing a lot of support, that's all. Inside joke. Yeah, uh, this crap price is why our grades are crash. Yeah, thanks to that duty book, you Japanese have it easier. Such were the cries of Chinese students at the Li Wai school. They were more and more frequent, and backed with ever-increasing violence against their Japanese classmates, whose retort was invariably something along the lines of, You Chinese couldn't have anyone to blame but yourselves. Well, I was sick of this. Wanting to step up and be something for once in her life, she decided to step up and try to mediate between the fighting groups. It backfired in her face when one of the Chinese students scoffed and shouted at her. Of course, since you're the sister of that perfect learner. The words perfect learner were spoken with deep contempt. You've got the privilege to say to play the mediator. But everyone here knows you're just as much of a Han Hanjian scoundrel as he is. The Chinese student didn't holler. Why could hear Japanese whispers behind her, feel their eyes staring back at her head? But she paid no, it no account. She had to defend herself from them. She owed herself from that little dude's expression of her self-doubt. To her own surprise, she fired right back. Shut up. Unlike all of you people, you're just all nothing. I'm better than you. I'm better than just being Hay's little sister, right? You know it's true, right? No one responded. So silence rolled in the yard, right? Right. 85% is pretty decent. Remain calm, remain calm, remain calm. It's a public service announcement. As of this day forth, Chief Executive Ibuka Master will no longer be conducting weekly public addresses to the people of Guangdong. The handling of economic affairs is an extremely delicate matter and requires his undivided attention. Citizens are reminded to work productively. Productively. Remain calm and obey the law. Failure to achieve these directives will be dealt with accordingly. Have a pleasant day and productive day. End transmission. Short staffed. I cannot stress enough how little I have time for this, continued Ibuka. Even in this mess, with standards lowered across the board, your department consistently and inexplicably manages to underperform. Explain. The manager shrunk in his seat a little. We're sorry, sir, it began. We'll do our best to rectify the situation. We're just very understaffed at the moment. If we had more people... If you got some nerve asking for, the thing, for this thing from me, said Ibuka, you're expected to work with the tools you're given, same as everyone else. If you cannot do this, you'll be replaced. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir, said the manager, choking back tears. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ibuka rolled his eyes and looked around the office while the pitiful display continued. Instead of working, the assembled employees had taken the opportunity to gawk. Effing typical. However, there was something strange about how they were standing. It was true. There was less in the office than there should be. But they weren't spread out the way they usually would be. All of them were huddled together, and the desks furthest away from a taped-up window. Even as they stared at the blubbering excuse of a manager, many of them were taking occasional glances towards it. Oh, so that's why they're understaffed. A brief shot of panic course through Ibuka's heart. Did he? Surely not. He cannot have caused this. No, they can't be this incompetent. He looked back down on the idiot he had left in charge, still a broken record of apology. Not good enough. A Fujitsu employee is expected to hold higher standards than this, and they would all be reminded for the good of Guangdong until morale improves. Plug the leak. 
One remarkably consistent thing throughout human history, however, is a propensity to flinch and escape at the first sign of trouble. You run into a wall, you turn around, you flee, and bail yourself out. You don't bother pushing ahead. Anyone that does, you call them fools and lunatics. Such are the lives men have fed to themselves every day since he was born on this earth. It was only too predictable then that more and more of our labor force, engineers and Japanese noblemen, are hurtling towards Guangdong's coastlines and borders even as its prospects have begun to recover from the oil crisis. Human cowardice is a real problem, and it is time we finally cooked up some, cooked up some real solutions. Hey, more house of electronics. Hey, that thing's finally gone, huh? Probably. Yeah, we'll see. Alright, so where are we at? 100%. We need seven and a half percent for up here. Seven and a half. Yeah, we could, 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 could. But do we want to? We just wait for the bigger one again. I love it when they fall apart. Making things clear, and where the power is vested in me as your chief executive. I'm giving no choice but to relieve the 15 ne members named from their legislative council position, City Booker. Banging the gavel down. The sound of the banging, however, was drowned out only by the yells of anger and disapproval coming from the Sony, Chung Kong, and even the Matsushita shootout wings of the Ludco. The Hitachi men, also affected by this, retained a stony silence, almost as if they were unaffected by this decision. After the general fur died down, Lee shut up. Morita, meanwhile, sat in an almost catatonic state. The blatant abuse of power began. Was it not enough for a chief executive to consistently, relentlessly go out of his way to make life worse for Guangdong's most vulnerable, both before the oil crisis and now? And now he cannot even bring himself to show a basic level of respect for even his peers in the legislative council for any safeguards against his mad vision. We demand the ruling be overturned at once. A book I'll look at Lee for a moment, Mr. Lee. Why do you continue to insist on getting in my way of the progress? Masashida's complacency, Komai's subversion. Okay, oh, spy, I understand all that, but you, you made something of yourself, what we all should, so why, why, Ibuka's voice was halting, uncertain. The room had silent, Lee's face was a mix of fear and embarrassment. After a while, Ibuka spoke again, voice clear. Let's cut the pretense of parliamentary obstruction, shall we? We all know why these men are being removed, and believe me, they are being removed, and if any of you show a similar lack of trustworthiness of commitment, you'll also be removed. Do you understand? Save them from themselves. Trust in the government has failed. More and more resistance across the northern and western borders. Trusting these fools remain inside of the state's borders is little more than a pipe dream. All borders must be tightened as much as possible. Be they land or sea, none shall escape. As we're beating up Africans, a matter of grave concern. Lieutenant uh, Nagano Shigeto sighed as he moved towards the phone, having knew what death trap Koshu wanted to soldier the test now. As mine already wandered towards how we would delicately bring the news of their deaths to the grieving mothers and widows, or how society finally collapsed as it had been on the verge of doing so for years, would it finally be the day he picked up the receiver? Oh, the man on the line was from Tokyo and not Koshu. A good start. Defense Minister, what can I do for you, said Nagano? I assume you've been keeping up on the local affairs of Guangdong, Lieutenant General, said the Minister. The Chief Executive's actions have been growing steadily more and more erratic, and it's beginning to make some important Japanese citizens in the state nervous, to say the least. Nervous, needless to say. This has made Tokyo a concern, and thus you are now concerned also. I see, said Nagano. Glad the Minister couldn't see his own grin over the phone. What would you have us do, sir? But I'll keep a very close eye on the proceedings. We are at present not willing to risk the economic potential of the region with direct military rule. However, if Ibuka proves himself unable to restore economic growth in the region, and more importantly, keep it stable and under control, you'll be expected to handle the situation. Any questions? None, sir. Just give the order, and your wish is my command. There we go. We got that part done. I still not understand that, which is good. Snatcher. Hajime thought about the pitch black uniforms that were bad enough in Goshu. At least there, the skyscrapers offered a modicum of shade. Uh, something that he was not getting in the open countryside. He had half a mind to turn to, in his notice before he was spontaneous combusted. No, he thought, you came this far, you're the best of the best. Down payment, think of the down payment. The armored band of the militia was parked on the main road, a few kilometers will cross from the border in Hunan into the Republic. A road once seldom traveled, saved by freight and diplomats, now a funnel those fleeing the three pearls, a waste of perfectly good human resources, as they had been told. Problem was, there was nothing technically illegal about the issue. Those running away all possessed legal rights to Chinese citizenship, so they couldn't be ex extradited as illegal immigrants, fortunately. There were so many other laws, both written and spontaneous. Once you arrest them, you can return them and then watch them like a hawk. Sadly, the government has decided this was all a bit too sensitive to be handled by regular cops at the border. Couldn't make it too obvious, couldn't pass off Nanjing, couldn't trust Zhujin's sympathies. So Hajime and the rest of the militia had been standing in the sweltering heat for hours on end, day and night. And they were far from enough, too many roads, too much ground to cover, too many people to corral. Hajime was tired, so tired. Tired of the sickly green and brown he stood in and sweated on. Tired of the endless shifts bleeding into each other. Tired of the cries and screams. Tired of holding back an unceasing tide. They may have been one of the best of the best, but they weren't good enough for this. Who could be? Standing against the current. Every tooth we have. Because the Yakuza thrives, we get the following effects. Oh boy. Our problem, not our man. Oh, I'll do this one later. They know better. 
and nothing to hide from her trusted associates. Well, we could try. When the thought of escape enters our system's minds, it seems no amount of logical reason can shake the thinking from their heads. To prevent these treasonous thoughts from ever occurring, we must employ the ever helpful Yakuza and Kempate contingent residing in our state. Did we get it done at least? We need 7.5%. We're getting close. There's 12 days left. Oh, we're so close. There we go. You know what? Just help him win, and we'll pull you out. I can't breathe! Good heck already, Korean. The shouts crash into you book as he dragged his feet across the threshold of Yuji first primary. He smirked. He can't go to heck. He'd already been soaked in head to toe for 256 days in a row and counting. Yes, yes. Darn me to the deepest pits of Lucifer's place all you want. At least this time I'm not the one going to do going to it myself anymore. The sudden volley of thuds of objects crashing into the flesh blew apart with a smoke or smog choking his head at once. He winced, but his skin didn't feel a thing. It wasn't him being pummeled. It wasn't even him being screaming at either, apparently, forcing his eyes open. He pivoted his heavy, wary head to the right towards the source of all the ruckus. Two schoolboys thrashing a third boy on the ground, thrusting their shoes into his sides again and again and again, punctuating the profanities flowing from their mouths. Go to heck, thud. Effing liability, thud. Effing waste of air, thud. Effing crap stain upon this place, thud. The boy didn't even offer a whimper. It was almost like he had no idea what was going to happen to him. There for one billionth of a second, his gaze collided with Ibuka's, and Ibuka saw it all emptiness. An emptiness Ibuka had known too, too well. No, a flashbang went off in his brain. No, 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 no. All his limbs jolted back to life at once. He didn't know what made it across the hallway. He didn't know when he shoved away the two bullies. At all he knew that when he came when he came to, he already had a trembling child in his arms. Sorry. Someone that was falling down his cheek. Sorry. One stream of tears converged with another until all that remained on his face was a ve veil of watery sorrow. Good God, I'm so sorry. He screwed his eyelids shut, and in the bottom of his void, he saw the veil gazing back at him, and the shape of his lips froze in eternal derision. He saw as it fluttered open like a pair of pale white feathers. Sorry, doesn't cut it. Glittering, glimmering, and I just can't take it anymore. The way the Japanese mock me for not being like them despite being a Zujin, and how the Chinese all keep repeating the same darn word, Hanjian, 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 that me. Despite my best efforts to prove that I'm just trying to keep the school from burning down, and th that wasn't enough. They've been throwing things at me, sending threats, threatening, no threatening notes to me right where everyone else can see them. Li Wai breathed deeply, and in and out of the way her mother had taught her, after going half horrifiedly and half angrily through a d diatribe by the state of affairs at her school. Her brother, Hei's response was to try and comfort her. See, here, Wai, there's nothing wrong with being brave and speaking up for what's right, before going off on a tangential rant of his own. And I'm so terrified how every blood Chinese in the gosh darn city seems to hate me, and they all keep uh, calling me Hung Jun too, which is so effing easy to put labels on people. And it helps nothing that they're all too creatively bankrupt to bother with anything else. Suddenly he stopped, breathing heavily, glancing at what a somewhat confused why, and darted into Chun's by most now mostly deserted room. Who else seemed to hate his guts for doing the things he did? Shuffling, shuffling over and again. Hey messed up the room until he saw a poster from the Committee of Chinese Labor. Of course, of course, his dude brother's coming after him. Rage and strangely fear consumed him. We need seven and a half. We have, we have five days left. Oh, I'm gonna risk it. Screw it. Flight of the Pigs. Another day passed in the precinct, and with it, more officers left it for the final time, leaving the station, leaving the city, leaving the whole three pearls far behind them. Uh, some may have called a Ben and Koshin in its hour of need, but Lam had seen them in action. Better they say the f say the fourth, the cost of their salaries. Most of his Zujin colleagues hated the militia, and for good reason. Lam, however, had to give them credit for this one. Amazing how after years of leeching, the worst Japanese cops would all pack up and leave once the slightest bit of pressure was put on them. He wondered what they'd do when they got back to the home islands, given their track record of what could they do. That said, morale was not going great among the remaining officers, uh, Japanese and Zujin alike. Red rings circled the odds of nearly everyone in the building, maybe to the militia, who knew behind those helmets? Then again, they did not seem quite as interested as screaming at officers for chatting as they used to. The words on everyone's lips were of escape, of release. The Zujin talked of visiting their families and their old lives back in the countryside, and the Japanese offered to join them as traveling companions, see the sights, and all that touching. Lam didn't join in, part of him also wanted to go home, but it was the low of it best. What would be home by now? The dying crops trying to invade to gain sustenance out the pearls of brown sludge? A handful of stragglers shying away from the all-consuming mall of the city. No home was a childish illusion. They were all stuck in the belly of the beast now, and an all honest cop could do was keep the digestive passages as clear and efficient as possible. He was saying, Koshu, not out of choice or compunction. It was all he could do. There was no choice, there was only the pearls. And all systems go. We made it through storm and fire. The jewel of the south prevails against the smog of uncertainty. Ibuka's vision triumphs. Streets, markets, government hall. The circuit boards of society sprung back into operation as Guangdong entrusts itself to further Fujitsu's calculations, expertise, and rightful guidance. But our work does not stop, and how could it ever? How should we succumb to feebleness and complacency where there so remains so many technological wonders left for us to create? So many truths left for us to unearth in this balanced universe. Citizens of Guangdong, we still know the answers all too well, and never. The gears of progress will turn on, and Guangdong shall stand, and tall and proud as it always has been, as a soul beacon of excellence upon this ungrateful and savage earth no matter what holds it in our faces. 
All hail chief executive Ibuka. All hail the truth. And may the great everlasting enlightenment be more with us for centuries more. The Lock Fortress. <clears throat> Once Tomoko had thought herself lucky to hold this job, it paid decently. It gave her something to dupe said spent all day cooped up with all the other military wives, and her work at the checkpoint hadn't been too strenuous. Mostly it was just trucks from the Republic bringing in raw goods for electronics to be carried the other way. A handful of locals crossed the border regularly for Tomoko to learn names and faces, but never very many of them, of course. <laughs> now they were legion, held back by the walls of law enforcement. Just a few days previously, evidence had been in a seemingly unending stream now straining against the blockage. Nobody was allowed in or out. Emergency decree without official permission. Needless to say, people were not happy. Nothing violent so far, but every minute seemed it would lead there, and if something broke out, would there even be enough men to hold back the enraged tide? Tomoko wondered why she was still getting paid to be here. So, uh, there was nothing she could do but wait in the glass box for the situation to escalate, or for violence to engulf all around her. The latter was more likely, Tomoko thought. She already heard of clashes at the other checkpoints and exits, not just involving the Chinese. She had a cousin who worked at the airport, and apparently a few days had gone by without at least one punch-up between the security and businessmen attempting to flee Tokyo. Even if the most civilized were being compelled to the barbarism, what things could happen here? Darn the money and the darn the independence. Right now, she'd be happy to be with the other military wives behind big walls and a bigger line of guns. Disperse, disperse, and the Falcom U200 microcomputer. Fujitsu Limited has announced their latest entry into the microcomputer market. The Falcom U200, a mere 16-bit microcomputer intended to control industrial processes. While its use cases are limited, it still represents a major advance in comp computer technology. Able to carry the processing load of a large mainframe computer of a decade ago, and oversee the kind of complex industrial processes that users require ten teams of 10 or more while being small enough to fit on a desktop. It won't be long before computers like this are standard at every office workstation. They just keep getting smaller and smaller. Look at that growth. The real growth, and miscellaneous income. And three more seats. Hey! Not bad. Oh, we lost it. Barely, but we did lose it. That's why I gave up on music. I will not attempt to obtain private housing, for there's no point. Oh, look at that. That's different. Two, I will not attempt to purchase any vehicle higher grade than a bicycle, for there's no point. I will not attempt to obtain social mobility for myself or any of my Chinese brethren, for there's no point. I will not attempt to enter up marital relations or any other relationship that mandates extensive long-term social commitment, for there is no point. Beautiful. I will not procreate or attempt to persuade others to procre procreate, for it is preferable that the society die a premature death, along with our emaciated flesh, than allow it to persist another day. I vow my soul and conscience to constrain my consumption of commodities on only subsistent level. Uh, to reject all devices of vice and exploitation that's, that has come and will ever come out of Fujitsu factory. To reject my fate as a slave to naked, indiscriminate capitalism under the guise of equality and prosperity. A book of master's vision is no vision. Is it, is, it is a disease, a corrosive substance, tainting every street it touches with apathy and misery. The greatest hypocrite of the 20th century pisses on every humanly conceivable moral standard and then craps out on his own, he goes. The resulting mess that is today's state of Guangdong is transcended beyond your average instrument of Japanese colonialism and imperialism. Nay, it is transcended logic, common sense, and basic human decency. It has become a state of the art, one of a kind of cesspool, asphyxiating every soul trapped within its cold concrete walls that is all that remains in Ibuka's master's mind. Thus, it is that I, just another maggot on the pile, will hope to know more for a better tomorrow other than to lie down on the floor, hear the heavenly dome shatter unto 10,000 pieces above, and close my eyes. For what better do I deserve anyway? Well, I might as well help finish him off. Khartoum against the Americans. But we're looking pretty good with the regions of Guangdong. Chinese hate us, but whatever. The region's doing okay. Every tooth we've got. Riding on the wall, one morning, upon the wall of squalid residential facility, much like any other, some posters appeared and had called upon the people inside to resist, to overthrow the corrupt Fujitsu regime and their Yakuza allies. Injustice is piled upon injustice, and soon they would spill over a poster's promise. The false meritocracy, the absurd nightmare of Guangdong would fade away, and in its place, a new China would emerge. Hammer and sickle, 12 point star, five people, equal peoples, any, of course, would do. The people saw these posters in their few hours of life, of course, but it said nothing that they did not already know. They knew what the Yakuza were doing to people across the border, and they knew the chief executive had his fingers in it. And they knew that everything Guangdong said about itself was a load of crap, but that didn't matter, for they knew where all the cameras were, about the punishments for disobedience, and what the nine-fingered men did to their enemies, and what had happened to the triads. So they kept their heads down and tried not to attract attention. By evening, the posters had already been removed. Dirty gray concrete remained, stretching far into the heavens, swirling around in an endless cityscape, shoulders hunched, eyes down, epistle. Everything had been going to crap, even the quality of Matsuru's slumber. Better memories, his fears, regrets, and unmet wishes came and went in an Ichoa haze. He came out so fortunate that he only remembered blurry outlines. He's like me, I can't sleep. Uh, even so, tonight was a little different. There was this voice banging against his skull as he floated in the endless void. A voice of judgment that sounded like, once like a kale, the emperor and the pastor of the Matsuru's church in 
Fujimicho, one of the few home islanders he missed, bellowed in classical Japanese the words of God. As scenes of fire and brimstone flashed before his eyes, go to now, you rich men, weep and howl in your miseries with which shall come upon you. The Fujimicho's two stockbrokers panicked in a room, one leant against the wall in which a projector showed the image of a total disaster. Others cried or clutched telephones, and one was held back from jumping out of a window to his death. You have stored up for yourselves wrath against the last days. Angry Fujimicho employees took revenge on a corrupt manager that, had gone by Ibuko's own decree, had stolen their salaries and mistreated them. After brutalizing him, they raided the safe in his office and emptied it. But destroying what they did not want, they set the place alight. You have feasted upon earth, and in riotousness, you have nourished your hearts in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and put to death the just one, and he resisted you not. Then came the faces, the wailing, the weeping, the shriveled up faces, male, female, young, old, Japanese, Chinese. The crucified Christ atop the hill hillocks of Golgotha, and then he broke a jolted awake, a nightgown drenched in cold sweat, and then the works came to him, surely not I, Lord. I wear this crown of thorns, day 315. A rattle, a whoosh, and nothing remained of the sheet of paper but a creasy orb, soaked in cold sweat and embraced by the frenzied tremors of Ibuka's palm. Paradise, his teeth clattered and clattered, or so you called it. Look at that child, those huddled silent men, all those people left on the streets because you couldn't be bothered to give a crap about them. Look at their weeping faces. Tell me this is your idea of a paradise, your idea of the best they deserve. He opened his mouth, but his ragged breaths failed him. Can't say a thing? Good. Serves you right. <coughs> Because you revel in hurting all these people, and then you pretend you don't. You tell the same lies yourself over and over until all that's left in your head are delusions and half truth. That's right, Masaru. Man up and quit being the spineless effing liar you know you are. Hey, look, 6% more approval. Nice. And more growth. Ah, he, he forced his head up against a white noise enveloping his brain, and then he saw the Fujitsu headquarters building, the Koshu R&D Nexus, tens upon tens, hundreds upon hundreds of chrome-draped towers that, like pillars of the pearly gates, upon the gleaming horizon, his citadels, the children, his legacy. The corner of his lips twitched and twitched until they contorted into a frozen smile. No, the F have even happened to you, Masu. What are you, a quitter? Like a effing a KO? No. No, he chuckled again. No, no, he was no liar. He'd given everything for his nation, his nation. And it worked, despite all his faults in his system of equations, it worked. To succumb to half a measure, to betray his one remaining purpose on this planet. Might as well be taking away his life. With wings of courage and indomitable gosh darn will, he'd risen above this unfathomable ocean of self that again and again and again, and it worked. My dream is not a lie, I'm not a lie. Ibuka Masaru is not a lie, and I refuse to have it any other way. We still have a deficit, but our growth is actually very good now. Oh, thank God. Even though we do have a little bit of corruption. Downsizing. Yet another day passed in the Legislative Council. Today, same as yesterday, and what everyone expected to be perfectly emulated in the days to come, the factions screamed at each other to the little no avail. Kind of like my life. The chief executive would. And now some new measure or another, which if it was lucky, might form some insignificant benefit or another. If it did, not immediately backfire, get shut down by the rest of the council every day, circling a little bit closer to the drain, but never quite reaching it. I mean, Kamai once again took the stand. Delegates expected more of the same, perhaps some new proposal for state investment in organ and harvesting, or legally reclassifying the Chinese as livestock by this point. Sony and Chong Kong delegates had stopped even attempting to stifle a groan if Kamai was in any way perturbed by this as he walked to the podium, he did not show it. Other delegates began. This ongoing crisis and the continued failures of the state to combat the economic downturn has been a continued disappointment to both myself and my colleagues at Hitachi. It is long past time to confront and act upon the truths that may, my fellow delegates might find unpleasant. As such, I must announce that Hitachi will be closing one third of its Guangdong based premises and relocating to more economically robust territories. This has caused an uproar in the chamber over the shouting one delegate's voice cut through. Are you insane? The country's already going tits up and you want to kick us down even further? Come on, Samaritan, my first priority is the continued prosperity of Hitachi Limited first, and your country second. Our rivals, it seems, have wedded themselves far too strongly to this land without contingency. A tragedy for you all, I'm certain, but Hitachi's lucky to have friends for their field. Throw into the dogs. So much sucks for these guys, but we don't care at this point. We've got bigger things to fry. Like our own people. Happy October, though, everybody. At least we're going to be growing now, finally. 54.46 billion. Please. Hey, not bad. Slave revolt. Enough of this. Um, ooh. Well, that sucks for them. But if you want to read about this one, please go ahead. Enough of this. Thank you. Time to read what you sow. Ah, uh, they have a slave revolt. We might have a revolt. The Iran's in civil war. The world's doing well. Crash succession. Um, I think I read this one before, too. Um, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. How do we have so much corruption? How's it going up more? Less than two a day, huh? Bad your breath. If you want to do that again, please go ahead too. Men, prepare to follow. Also, I will go back and do the other route for the more of the uh, reconciliation path, so. Are you still in a civil war? What is going on here? 
You have the oil crisis and looming fiscal disaster, and the French revolutionaries are a commenter member and have an oil crisis. So you have a bunch of stratocratic Nazis versus a bunch of revolutionary front communists. So that's how it ends. Your death will not be in vain. Oh, are they still fighting Mozambique? I love it. You never know what the dead are doing. They shall not pass. If you read this one, please go ahead too. I'm pretty sure I read this one too, so. <coughs> Africa's still together. They're cleaning up fairly decently, though, here, though. They just won't lose a, a capital. The Inferno. It's a good time to build up a lot of political power because, my God, we are going to need it. Even though we're, we're very dominant. We're absolutely dominant. If you're ever this dominant, you should be 100% dominant. Um, let's see. In Koshi, the crowds have assembled since before dawn. There are barrage of slogans and chants emanating up from the streets and alleys in front of the government complex. It seemed that the entire city had turned out in their anger, a teeming mass of men and women crammed shoulder to shoulder against a thin line of police at the gates. Chief Executive and aide hurried into the office without knocking. You had to stay from away from the windows. That's not safe. Nowhere is safe. Chief Executive Iboko Master snapped bitterly. The mobs that had risen across Guangdong were well and truly out of control, turning the headache of the Hitachi factory hostage crisis into a raging inferno threatening to swallow Guangdong whole. The previous night, Iboko Master and the rest of the tycoons had listened in horror as the police frantically reported being pushed back to the key facilities and the Japanese districts in the larger cities. Or uh, breaking into full retreats in the countryside, the Zhujin and businessmen in the Legislative Council were ducking his calls, saying little beyond the government's latest promises weren't enough. All the while, the Japanese investor turned their eyes on the chief executive, equally angry at and secretly enjoying his plight, safely barricaded behind police cordons outside their walled settlements. Sorry, Buka Master, replied to the officer, shaking the cobwebs from his mind, throwing on a well creased jacket. Call everyone to a meeting. We need a new response. All the while, Guangdong burned. Nice. The writers automatically seize three rural regions. And here we are. Riots break out. So, like normal, we're probably going to try uh, to get these guys down first with the GFT. Um, Chinese labor, this will be easier to dismantle, so. And if we have enough political power, we'll also do the Streets of Rage. Well, you know what, we could probably keep that one open too. So they automatically receive three, but they only have two. Access denied. Honestly, this is not too bad. Government support 62, 63, 60, 63, 60. That's very low, and that's very low, so we'll have to be working on that, but. Error. Uh, we thought it would be no. The labs, billboards, blazing citadels of technological brilliance towering over Koshu, Hong Kong, and Macau. We thought we had hammered into every one of our citizens' skulls and made it them see it all. The resilience, strength, and objective superiority of our vision. Because it all worked, didn't it? It worked despite the constant whines, grumbles, and naysaying from every direction. It worked even in the face of seemingly insurmountable global catastrophe. Turns out it wasn't enough. It never was. Two entire networks of organized resistance bubbling up from beneath the collapsing streets and government ha halls. Two. An entire suspects filled to the brim with thankless imbeciles, converging into a tsunami felt spreading regression and savagery wherever it goes. They clamor for change, for action, despite all the change in action that Fujitsu's done for their sakes. They clamor for a better future, gleefully spitting on the very future that we've practically stepped into their hands. Day after day, minute after minute, second after granting s greeting second, Guangdong lies paralyzed, despondent as eternal enlightenment slips further and further from our reach, but we will not falter. Our vision remains valid and unwavering as ever. Whatever those screens do, it works. It always will, it has to. Diagnosis. We do not invest so heavily into a surveillance for nothing, did we? The electric eyes, hours come, and with it we shall find out exactly who, what, and where is accounting for all this disruption. They shall be found, isolated, removed, and things will go back to their intended order. Our society cannot and will not be ground to a halt by such a barbarous acts. Blue. The ringing in his head had begun even before the words tumbled out of his mouth, and with every tick and talk it simmered and swelled, pressing upon his two quivering eyeballs from the cavities behind. The eight departing figure lingered on his lenses for one more time, uh, before the mahogany door sealed itself away, together with what remained of the outside wall with one last faint click, and then he was alone. The screeching came first, tearing through his gray matter from the now to his temple. The blacks landed gently on the carpet floor, proceeding to shatter into a shower of 8,000 shiny crystal teledrops. The leather sofas and ebony desks crash into each other's embrace, melting and intertwining until all that was left was a bobbling, throbbing pile of black brown sludge, and as he waltzed and waltzed and waltzed without care in his personal health. Until the aching in his hands and feet was too much, he collapsed into the floor, his glasses tumbling off into ob oblivion. The ringing was still there an eternity later as he grasped and lifted his head to, up to confront the fruits of his own labor, except it wasn't the wreckage of the office of the chief executive that entered this bare, foggy people. It was Guangdong herself. Eyes wide open and guts all over the floor, and then Fujitsu half rings dangling from her hand, dripping with blood. And then, her purple lips opened, streams of crimson spurring out with every movement. Six years, she said, the void in her eyes meeting his. Six more wretched, torturous, miserable years I've trudged and suffered through, all when it should have ended in Yasuda. Six more years of a life that was never meant to be. Because of you, Ibuka Masu, wanted to play a messiah, and it's all your fault. Pretending won't bring it out of sight. It's always 
waiting there. So always waiting there for you. But unfortunately, we have to end it there and uh, continue going on with this in the next episode. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll have fun blowing up the city of Guangdong. Thanks for watching, and have a great vision of the Book of Masters, vision, rest of your day.